Hello and welcome to Math 200 Statistics at Kenyatta College. Here we begin our study of probability and statistics. The textbook we are using is Essentials of Statistics, 5th edition by Mario Triola. My name is Ray Lapuz and I am the instructor for this course. Each section begins with a review and preview. Since this is the first section of the first chapter, there isn't much to review, so let's take a look at the preview. The study of statistics comes in many forms. We have polls, experiments, observations, etc. But the idea is that we look at a smaller representation of a larger group. We gather information about the small group and make generalizations about the larger group that they represent. We begin this section by establishing some important vocabulary words that we will use throughout the course. Terms like sample, population, statistics, and parameter will have special meaning in this class. In this first chapter, we will be introduced to important terms, some statistical thinking, types of data, and types of sample. Let us begin. Our first definition is data. Data is the collection of observations, such as measurements, genders, or survey responses. Basically, data is the collection of things that we want to study. Now this definition will be the first question on your first exam. It will also be the first question on your final exam. As a subject, statistics is a science that can be broken down into several parts. One, we plan and collect data. Two, we organize, summarize, and present the data. And three, we analyze and draw conclusions about a general group based on the data we collected. The picture shown here was a cover of an older edition of Triola's textbook, and it really sums up the definition of statistics. The population is the big group that we are interested in studying. This could be all of Kenyatta College students, all the basketball teams in the NBA, all of the peanut M&Ms, or all of the presidents in the United States. Let's consider the population to be all the Kenyatta College students. If we get information from the registrar's office about every single student from our college, we have a census. With this information, we can report the average age or the proportion of females in our population. But there are times when we might not have access to the big group. In these cases, we would need to find a subgroup. We would have to obtain a sample. We would want the sample to be representative of the whole population we are studying. We will take a look at this process later in this chapter. Here's another example. The Gallup Corporation collected data from 1,013 adults in the United States. Results showed that 66% of the respondents worried about identity theft. In this example, the population would be every single person in the United States. Maybe this was taken back in 2008 when the population of adults in the United States was about 241,472,385. A sample would consist of a subgroup of that enormous population. So in this example, the sample consists of 1,013 adults that were polled. 
the objective is to use a small data such as a ba as a basis for drawing a conclusion about the big population. That's the end of section 1-1.